Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Validated by Victoria. I'm here with a TikTok, I mean, star. He's on the rise. He's got over 560,000 followers. I should say 560 followers, but 560,000 followers um, growing. He does tattoos. I kind of got a little tattoo the other day. I'll, I'll, I'll say more about that. But this is Christian Critted. Okay, you're going to have to say it because I'm not butchering that again. <laughs> yeah, Christian Crittenden. And, you almost but, had it though. You did good. I almost had it. I was, my my country accent <laughs> will like butcher anything. Right. Okay. So just tell me about like your first TikTok and like how you started because you've you've grown pretty fast. You had like one I was just showed you before we went rolling that like got twenty six million views. I think that's just so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's super fun. Like um, with, with the way TikTok started for me was we me and some friends you know in the studio just making videos just for fun. Didn't expect anything to come out of it. It was just like, throw them up. Maybe we'll get some bookings out of it. Like people make some people laugh. And uh, once the first couple of videos started to kind of like gain some traction and then like, it was like 10,000 followers, 50,000, a hundred thousand. It was like, Oh my God, where is this coming from? And uh, so, and it was just, it was like the consistency of it. Like it was the, of course we all have that like um, validation of of you know of like the the growth and things like that and you want to keep going and you want to keep pushing um it's more motivation to, to do more so that gave me like everyday content boom 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 making videos posting every day and uh but but the honesty of it is like it wasn't intended that way it was just like let's just make some stuff have some fun with it and see where it goes and uh and yeah it's completely like been life-changing to be honest oh that's awesome i feel like a lot of people I talk to who've been on social media, especially my my friend Alex James, he's been growing pretty big. Um, he was there since Vine. He just started making some funny videos, and it just kind of happened. I feel like a lot of people I talk to, they just don't really search for it. It just happened. That's what they say yeah. when you're dating. They're like, as long as you don't search for it, it comes to you. I feel like it's the same <laughs> in the social right. media realm. Like if you're not like trying to be famous, it just kind of hits you out of nowhere. And right. literally nine times out of 10, everyone I talk to that that's their story. They weren't trying to do anything. They're just trying to be themselves, trying to be funny and people liked it. So, and that's right. your right. case. Now, how'd you get into the tattoo world? You're from Louisiana. Uh -huh. I mean, all right, let's preface. I'm from North Carolina. That's like the Bible Belt. Like, you know, right. my parents are like, nay, tattoos. Like, how did you get into that? Absolutely. And that's funny too. It's like my my family is kind of like that too, in a sense. And like now look, it's like, like <laughs> my, my face done. They don't love it. But um so when I was when I lived in Louisiana, um, as a lot of southern states are, it's like you go to school, you graduate, you start working, you get married, you have kids, you die. And that's like the the preface of living in louisiana mostly um if you want to do anything you kind of got to leave but with me personally my case was i battled with like you know drug addiction alcoholism things like that for a select amount of years in my life and whenever i finally like had enough it was like this is i'm done i'm over it like my life is in shambles essentially um i decided to go get help and when I did that, um, kind of opened my eyes to a, a new world. You know, I don't need these substances and things like that to get by or make myself feel whole. Um, so when I did that, I went to Mississippi for a little bit. Then I tracked to California with like just a backpack ready to do it. Not sure what's going to come of it, but we're going to It's better than Louisiana. And it's they got beaches, you know. So when I get out here, it was just kind of like making it make, make getting by with the best that I could things like that. So I've been in California for about three years now. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's been a, it's been a road for sure. So when I first got out here, it was slow growth at first. It was just like, you know, not even, not even social media at all. I had no social media presence whatsoever. Um, wasn't tattooing either. Like I, I started tattooing, um, like right whenever like COVID hit quarantine, things like that. Um, and of course, like I always tell people don't do this, but I was, you know, tattooing myself and my friends <laughs> and things like that. Um, now learning, like being a professional and this is, this is my career. Um, uh, I try to voice to people that there's a, a better way to do that, um, before they go, you know, doing these things to their friends and themselves and having yeah. to cover things and all that. Um, so whenever I did that, everything, uh, I had a buddy that was already a, um, professional tattoo artist and he's seeing my things and he's like okay they're not terrible 
Um, <laughs> would you want to learn the right way? So did that, did my apprenticeship and everything like that. So now it's been probably about two years of professional tattooing, full time, um, traveling everywhere, doing all these things. And it's just, it's happened very quickly for me personally. It's, it's kind of surreal for me to feel that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you always been like interested or good at art? Because I mean, you got to have some like drawing skills where my mom was an artist. Me, I can barely draw a stick figure. So <laughs> there's that. Have you always right, had like right. an affinity for art or like been kind of talented at that? Or is there something you worked on? Um, well, so whenever I was re- really young, my mom had me painting and drawing and things like that. It was kind of like a, an outlet in a way for like me to feel good. Um, uh, because growing up, I wasn't always like the coolest kid, you know what I mean? So like, that was like my outlet, essentially. That's where I would turn to, to feel something and feel a little bit better about, um, myself, you know, like, look, look, mom, look what I did. I drew this. Like, I remember like pretty young. I was like, I was like middle school ish. I drew like a portrait of Little Wayne, and it was like. It was like <laughs> do you the, still the have it? I was, uh, it's somewhere. I definitely oh do. I think I might have it. Actually, you need to like frame um, that, <laughs> right? Um, so with that, and then like one thing my mom instilled into me, like very young, was paint your edges of your canvas like all the way around, so that you don't have the negative, like the blank spaces on the sides, and like that kind of um, made me feel like complete what you start. Like if you start something, like don't do it half-ass. Like you have to fully commit to it and do it the best of your ability. You know what I mean? That's my motto. Go big or go home. So if you don't go big, then just just stay at home. But I love that you say paint around the canvas. And my mom, I, I love artists and I have such an appreciation for any type of art, whether it's tattooing, beading, I don't know, yarning, whatever you do, that's art. I have an appreciation for it. So, um, yeah, my mom was always so particular about her artwork and her paintings and, um, a little bit about my story and my listeners know my, my mom passed away last year. And so I have all her paintings and I just moved into a new house. And so I've been hanging them up. So when, when I got the word that you know, a, a tattoo artist will come in, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool because my mom did art and that's just something I'm not good at. So I, you know, appreciate what you do. I think it's amazing. What is the coolest tattoo you've done so far um so i've got there's there's something along the lines of like my favorite tattoos are like really vibrant very nice like saturated colors bold like you can see it from a mile away um so i've got i don't know if you're i've got a couple here like on yeah we're rolling so if you're watching on youtube you can (laughs) see it yeah um so like something like things like that oh I love that. I love butterflies. Nice, vibrant colors. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of like I can't pin it down to one. That's one thing like I just can't do because it's like I have so much love for my. This is my passion. You know, I mean, this is this is what my life is. So like narrowing it down to one is is pretty difficult. But I definitely have my select ones that I'm like, yes. How about your least favorite one? Um, so in the shop that I started in, um, it was very much like walk-in street shop, things like that, you know, it's just great. Um, but then you get a lot of just whatever comes in, you know what I mean? So, um, that would be me, <laughs> that'd be day, me after a couple of tequilas. <laughs> <laughs> so actually one day I had this one guy come in and it was like, um, he, he was, you know, he had been next door at the bar that was, you know, it's right. It's connected to the shop pretty much. Um, comes in and he's like, Hey, I want to get, uh, a, the, the Jägermeister logo on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting here. I'm like, okay. Like, um, cause of course with this, with this grown man, that's been sweating all day and things like that. I'm like, you're going to pay a little extra for that. <laughs> so I was like, I'll do that for 500 bucks. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like this big, you know, like, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's, that's all. All right. And I'm like, oh, I really thought that was going to turn you away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knock it out in like an hour. You know what I mean? It's like done deal. Like, here you go. He <laughs> loves it. He leaves. And I, afterward, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh, man. But there's there's a bunch of them sweaty that- booty, booty tats. Sweat. Exactly. There's like, uh, 
I had some guy friends that all went and got butt tats before. It was like yeah. a band of brothers or something. I have no idea. And I'm like, <laughs> y'all good, bro? Yeah. Right. I mean, you still remember that. Yeah, you remember, was he happy? Like, was he like... Oh, he loved it. He, well, yeah, you know what? Was, as long as you're making it. someone happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's like, that's essentially why, like, I did choose what I chose essentially like with the tattooing things like I say I chose really I feel like it kind of it just happened it was meant to be like it chose me essentially and but with like content and things like that it's almost like that's my that's what I'm trying to do is make people have a better day and make them laugh and make some people going through a bad time and things like that I've had a lot of people tell me that like oh my god your videos got me through this and I'm like what that's crazy to me that's crazy to think that like I'm just here making videos, trying to educate people and, and, and give them a good time and make them smile at least for a second. And it's like that it's so how much impact is in that, you know? And that that's awesome. That's what I, I've talked to a lot of creators and or people in the spotlight. And I feel like a consensus is, you know, they do what they do. And for me, especially, cause I, I do a little bit of content creation myself, but Mm -hmm. just when I have someone message me like, Hey, you've inspired me to keep going on. I'm like, Hey, at the end of the day, if I just have one person tell me that I've, I've done my life. Right. So do you ever share, I know you're talking about you, you overcome addiction and you went through, do you talk about that? Or is that something you haven't gotten to yet? Um, I'm very open about it. I do. I do let people know because for one, it's like, I was scared to talk about needing help and before I got help, you know what I mean? I didn't want to talk about it. It wasn't like, it's not your business. Leave me alone. Essentially. That was like my, the way I lived on that front. You know what I mean? So if I, if I can let people know that it is possible to overcome that and, and live a good life and be happy with yourself, then I do that. Cause like every year on my sobriety birthday, I make a post about it, of course, and I share and I'm like, Hey, like if you need something, say something, Yeah, you know what I mean? So I very much try to stay on top of like people that do reach out on things like that. Like I'm like, you know, just know you're not alone. And I kind of run them through like my story and like tell them how I got through what I got through and and how bad it was at one point and what, what happened and what it's like now, you know? I I always encourage people when they're ready, like tell, tell your story that really altered your life. And for me, it took, I, I had a brain tumor and, and my mom passed away. It was just like trauma after trauma. And uh, it took me some time, but finally been able to share my story this year. And not only have beautiful things happen for myself, but it also has helped a lot of other people, which in turn helps yourself. So it's like, you're, you're still healing. It's not, it's not like, Oh, we're done healing. We're good. Like you, you yeah. probably have to recognize you're still, you're still healing. That's why you celebrate your sobriety birthday. Um, Absolutely. But I feel like addiction, trauma, anything that you go through, I, I feel like it's really important. And I love seeing who creators are real and open about their stories. So like, I really appreciate that. And you're talking about your life path. Like what I, I like to say this now, and I feel like it's a good question to ask because I've had like a couple of people be like, what is your why? Like, why do you do what you do? Like, what is your why? Oh, man. Um, it's a very deep question. <laughs> It is. It really is. Like to think about it in an aspect of like, why did, why did I take that first step? Like, why did I, why did I keep going? Like, why did I, you know, um, it's honestly like we all want to make our parents proud. Of course, there's always that. Um, but it's more than that. It's like, I'm the oldest of six kids. Um, so with that, I want to set a good example for one. Two, there's so much hate in the world as it is now. It's like, it's like I want to, I want to put some good in it. Like, how can I impact this stream of life in a positive way? You know, and it's like you were saying earlier. It's like if one person reaches out and says thank you, like you did this, like that's you know that's huge. It's like if if I go like I do this a lot, and and it's not for any reason. It's just because like like I'll go to Starbucks and I'll you know, put in my order and everything like that. And whenever I go to pay, I pay for the person behind me every time I go. And it's just because like, for one, like hope in in hopes that they pass that on, they pay that forward. Um, And even if they don't, it's like their day might be a little bit better. They might've woke up in a bad mood or had some fight with, with a friend or something like that, that they just weren't having the best day and they had to get their coffee and they got their coffee paid for. And it's like, 
I would never ask for recognition on something like that or anything. It's just, that's just one way that I like to push that, you know, and you push that, yeah. um, that envelope on like be a good person today, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you had like a big come up. I mean, addiction's not easy and healing from that. And yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really know that about you, but like, um, what? Well, Obviously, I talk about on this podcast a lot or I don't really go in deep because I like people to tell their story and I like to get to know them from meeting them right off the bat. Right. First impressions. So uh, now like listening to that, you know, I've known a lot of people battle addiction. They've overcome it. A lot of people have succumbed to it, unfortunately. And it's a it's a big problem here in America, which is really sad. I mean, all over the world. Um, but I mean, that's a that's a big come up. I mean, yeah. did you struggle going, like, was there times where you're like, hmm. well, yeah, yeah, because like it, once you get into that, like into the, the recovery side of things and you like, you're trying to stop and you like want to get that out of your life for good. You meet a, a, you know, a group of people that, that have the same mindset and like you do end up losing people at times, you know, and that's, that's hard. Um, but it's just part of the journey, the experience of, of it all, you know, and it sucks to say that, but it's the reality of it. Um, and it's also like a wake up call, like, okay, I have to keep it together. Yeah. Cause that can be next, you know? Yeah. So yeah, we've definitely, there's definitely been times where I'm like, man, this is a difficult, um, but I've never been the one to turn back to the substance. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, I know where my life goes. If I do that, I know where I'll end up. Like I can bypass six months of time that I'm doing these things and I know where I'm going to be at the end of it. Yeah. So I don't even be the first drink. I won't even touch it. You know what I mean? I don't even think about it because like, I know where I go, exactly. you know? I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, everyone struggles and I think it's just important to know like, okay, Oh, I'm sober. Everything's good. Like you struggle. You have those thoughts sometimes. I think it's important for people to hear, to feel validated that they're like, Oh, it's okay to have those thoughts, but as long as you don't succumb to them, um, because I mean, there's times, I, I mean, I have depression I, there's times I've been thinking about things, but I, I think that's just human. That's normal. And a lot of people have those feelings. So I think that's just important to touch on in that aspect. Um, but, and also look at you, you've, how many years have you been sober now? Um, three years now, three years. And like, look how sobriety like what has taken you <laughs> you're like tiktok famous for lack of better coin term but like you've really and you found your life path like i think that's admirable so what's what's next for you you you're growing you're still growing like what's what are your goals for 2023 because we're coming to the end of the year now yeah yeah so here come in the, the beginning of 2023 i'll be um transitioning into a new studio tattoo studio and it's gonna it's um it's it's a nice like elegant type appointment only things like that um and that's kind of like my speed right now like that's kind of where i'm at because for one it's like i'm going to be doing a lot of travel in 2023 i'm going to be um in france i'm gonna be in amsterdam australia wow. um, and then of course in the states and things like that so it's like it's a big year coming up in 2023 and yeah. um having having these these things like these tools that we do have like social media and things like that they help so much and because i have i have fans in australia and i'm like what isn't Are it crazy you, i think you have friends all i mean friends but friends fans all over the world exactly. yeah so it's like i i now like whenever i go out there like i i recognize names i recognize like whatever and it's like Oh my God. I remember seeing your, your comment. I'm so glad you reached out and I get to tattoo you now and we get to have fun. We get to make a video or whatever it is. It's like, it's such a good time. And, um, so I'm super blessed to say like, I do have the opportunities to travel around the world because like, that's always been something of mine. Like I want to do a lot of travel, like Australia specifically. I don't know why it's always just been one of those that like, I really, really wanted to go to. And now having this opportunity, I'm like, okay. whoa pause on that because I was talking to this Australian girl and she was like, Hey, you got to make sure it's not spider season. Yes. That's so, what I've heard. Like, whenever you go to Australia, they're like huge. They're everywhere. I'm like, so ah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, no, nah, that's your house now. You can yeah, have it. <laughs> no, I would just burn everything. And then here you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you got world, you got world travel, new studio. Where is your studio going to be located? Uh, Newport Beach. Okay. Still, um, still around um, the area um, in Southern California. Um, but it, like I said, it was just, it was just time for me to take that next step and kind of um, get a lot more along the lines of like nice private studio type of like vibe. You know what I mean? Nice chill, like. Yeah. Yeah. Just so like for me, like mentally focusing on the tattoo, things like that with my client, like they get the experience that they deserve and everything like that. Because I'm big on like, say like you book a tattoo and we're tattooing all day and it's lunchtime. And well, you know, like, okay, oh, you hungry? What do you want? This and that. So we order the food and and I always treat my clients to, you know, lunch, dinner, oh, whatever, okay. breakfast. Uh, because it's part of the experience. It's like I would be so hangry too. And I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have food yeah. and I'd be like, hi. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And cause it, it does, it, it eases it a little bit. It's like, oh man, now, now we've bonded too. We've sat and we've talked, you know, food about is whatever. such a bonding moment. At least it really is. It really <laughs> so you just saying you provided food. I mean, it just lifted my spirits up. So <laughs> just going to point that out there. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a, uh, so you it's like to make it the experience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Now, who is like someone you hope to tattoo? Like who's someone like famous or something you hope to tattoo um, in like 2023? Man, or you've been like always wanting to, I'm like, ah, I just want to hit some ink on his skin <laughs> or her right. skin. Um, I don't know. That's like a, that's like a real tough one. I would love to tattoo maybe like, um, Man, I don't like so as far as like celebrities go, things like that, like Robert Downey Jr. has always been one of my favorites. Ryan Reynolds is like literally Ryan Reynolds is actually my background. <laughs> <laughs> Why I mean, do guys have an obsession with Ryan Reynolds? I don't see him. I mean, yes, serious? like I get it. Like he's married to Blake he's Lively a too. Specimen. But, but guys like, on if I can social tattoo, media are obsessed with him. <laughs> If I could tattoo Ryan Reynolds, like I'd be, I, I'd be good. You'd be like, I'm done. We're done. Yeah, I'm putting it down. I'm hanging up the towel. Like I've, <gasps> I've made. It. We've made it. We've made it. So <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, if somehow you figure find this, tat, let this boy tattoo your booty. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> or just tattoo you. <laughs> I just think it's funny. So I was talking about in the intro how I, I kind of got tattooed the other day. I have no tattoos except one. I just got my. This is not anywhere near what you do, but I got lip blushing and yeah. this is really like tattoo like lipstick on you. And my lips hurt so bad right now. I'm like, okay. uh, and yeah, so that was an experience I've never been in. I was just sitting there. I'm like, is this how it feels? But maybe not. Um, probably hurts a little bit more on your lips, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it was, I was like, yeah, everyone asks me a lot of times, like, if my face tattoos hurt and things like that. And those were the easiest tattoos I've got. Really? Yeah, but I can imagine, like, on the on lips, my lip, it would be pretty gnarly. Mm. I've seen girls get their, like, eyebrows done. Yeah, I feel like, like I can do that. the eyebrows. Like, the lip, I was like, oh, this is not going to hurt. And I'm like, I'm just laying there, <laughs> like, staring wrong. at the ceiling. <laughs> and she was just like, girl, I know you're in pain right now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna look cute after like i feel fine today and that was yesterday so i thought i thought it was funny to add but then it's like the only tattoo i have um again yeah. like i said earlier when you're living in the bible belt yeah and then uh modeling and stuff it's always been there's always been some stereotype around tattoos like right, you literally right. have to put in for model like submissions or even on fashion week, Miami swim week, like, do you have tattoos? And I'm like, so why does that matter anymore? Honestly, with a girl with no tattoos, like, I don't care. Like if you can right, walk, right, if you right. can model, like why should that matter? I feel like you probably understand there's like, especially yeah. like a perception around tattoos. And I feel like it's slowly fading away, but especially in the modeling industry, I'm like, yeah, I got that belly piercing hole from when I was 18. <laughs> Don't put that it's on okay. that. Okay, I've got I've got the same hole. You're good. Like the I, belly I got pier? My, Yeah. <laughs> I had like that cool girl thing when I was like 18. I wanted to be like, I don't know, a rebel. I Maybe. went to the mall Maybe. and got it done. And then I'm like, girl, what you do? Why'd you do that? 
Um, so on like the podcast, like before we close, we always talk about dating or some sort of dating. It's funny because I just talked this girl who lives in LA and we're talking about dating in California. Are you single in a relationship? Like what, it's complicated. You don't know. Well, um, there's, there's something to be said about, about things like that. It's like, I do have a person, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but with being a tattoo artist in general, it's hard to have a relationship and a family and things like that because of the long hours and because of, you know, the, the amount of people that do see us, you know, as, as tattoo artists. And, um, so it took it, I, I, I danced around that for a long time, like just from like past traumas, things like that, of course, but like, especially in this day and age, dating is so much different. Oh, it's like, it's like, it. like what is up. going on? Dating you know? sucks and, now. I honestly, it was better when I was in high school. I'm like, what's going on? But your girl's almost 30. Um, yeah, you don't have to reveal anything, but like, do you go on dates? Like, have you been on dates in LA? When did you, when you first moved to like the, um, California area, did you go on dates or like, um, a little bit. There was like, there was like a stage where like, I didn't do any of that. Yeah. And then, um, it was, it was, it's weird. Cause like being the, being the tattoo artist and like with like in the beginning of like TikTok and things like that, there was a lot of people like, you know, Slide hey, in the DMs. Hey. yeah, exactly. You know, so I was like, a lot of times I steered clear of some of that because they yeah. get for the wrong reasons. Exactly. You know you got, you got to be very her. careful, especially because, you know, people, there's people who love your successes. There's always people who want to ruin it too. Yeah, so you absolutely. just, you never know. And it's so sad, but you never yeah. know. But my, <laughs> we were, um, Sarah and Meg from <laughs> F boy Island. Uh, we were talking about dating in California. Cause I've been on quite a few dates and, uh, to say the least and dating in California is definitely different from the rest of the um united states but yeah i don't i don't know how people do it there. yeah it's for me it's like uh, i just kind of like what you said it's like I, I don't know how people do like a lot of the dating and things like that yeah. out here specifically because like being like from louisiana like you know everybody oh yeah in so the it's, south it's you know everyone like, yeah, it's like very much like, oh yeah, we got together in high school and we just <laughs> stayed. You know what I mean? It's like, it's I like, go back home and there's people who have like my age. I'm 29 mm -hmm. and they have five kids, and yeah. I'm still in shock and awe. I'm like, how do you have five children? I'm still a kid myself, and yeah, I, I you know, but like at least you know, coming from the south. They find themselves in high school. They literally get married or engaged or I have no, God knows what, like right after high school and more power to them. God bless them. They, whatever. But I mean, 90% of the ones I knew got married in high school, they're divorced already. So there's yeah. that <laughs> with five kids. And I'm just like me and my dog child are, are, are doing quite all right. But dating yeah. scene difficult, especially, I guess you travel tattoo artists um, and long hours. I, I didn't really think about that. I didn't think yeah, about it's that. It's a lot. It's a lot. And especially then, yeah. doing social media and as well, you got to figure out who's, who's fake and, or who's actually yeah. liking you for you. And then there's also that, the, 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 that one, it takes a special person to, to be there with someone that has the, the, the following, you know, that, yeah. you know, can that, handle that we it. Have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like you have a lot of people sliding your DMs, you have a lot of people commenting and that can get to someone. Yeah. You know, jealousy that all the time. And, Ooh, we could have a whole episode about that, but yeah, that that's what I've seen a lot of insecure insecurity. They like want it and then they have it. And then they're like, I don't know if I like all these people commenting and start like pointing fingers. And like, it's just like, that's just not, you know, people on social, we, I don't respond to every love poem DM that I get. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you don't either. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the in, insecurity and I get it. I get it. Date, but dating now is rough. I think we've came up with a consensus through all the episodes of shot. Dating <laughs> is just, is it's, it's a cold world out there when you're dating. So if you're mm -hmm. happily with someone, you're like, oh, I want to play the field. I have friends like that. They're like happily with their significant other. And you're like, oh, I'm thinking about being right. single to play the field. I'm like, no, like you, you stay happy. If you're happy, yeah. stay happy. Yeah, stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Cause Don't it's go a cold anywhere. world. It's like World War three out here in the dating world. But, um, 
again, always touch on dating on the podcast. It's, it's like the number yeah. one thing people always want me to talk about. I don't know why. It's, I, I think, I feel like that meme who's like, I'm like the single person giving everyone advice on dating. <laughs> and I don't know, like, I can't, they always come to me. All right. my friends are like, what should I do? And I'm like, guys, you know, like my relationship life sucks, but I guess I give some great advice, but there's sure. that. Well, that's of course, <laughs> that's, that's always how it is. You know what I mean? Like we can talk on it, but we can't take what we say. Exactly. Like- <laughs> exactly. That's how it always is. Well, Christian, I appreciate your time, taking your time out to come on the podcast. Really appreciate hearing your story. Follow you on TikTok without the E-N. <laughs> we, you got to figure out how to add that E-N back in. Right. Uh, Instagram, is it the same? Um, no, it's actually, so that's another thing too. It's Christian with three N's AC. <laughs> Man the and their TikTok deal. usernames. <laughs> I'm not good with usernames, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, you know, you're out there. You're on Instagram, TikTok, any other platforms? Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat. Ooh. All oh, Snapchat. All right. Yeah, well, maybe China. we'll see more butt Jaeger Meister logo, whatever picks, butt picks. Yeah. I hope someone else comes in and gets one before the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> After they watch this, I get like, they're like they make sure they're them. so sweaty too. <laughs> perfect perfect well i appreciate you coming on taking time out of your busy day happy tattooing today and i hope you have a really happy thanksgiving too thank you so much thank you for having me i'd love to be on any time and yeah. uh, definitely be in touch if you ever come to california be sure to hit your boy up we'll, we'll get my first tattoo, tattoo. You can hide it my first tattoo i'll come to you perfect perfect, perfect. <laughs> well you have a great one i really appreciate you absolutely thank you so much you Bye. too Later.